Welcome to another edition of the Views from the Friend Zone podcast. It's your boy Real Talk Marv, who I got in the building with me. Sensei, back in effect. I missed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've been following the show for a while, originally for a long time, it was just me and Sensei holding it down. Shout out to Clifford, shout out to Amanda, they're traveling, taking care of family business and all that good stuff. It's Leo season. We in the building. My birthday was Friday. So shout out to all the Leos, you know what I'm saying? I had a good time. Appreciate it. I'm going to shout out some Leos I got to show love to. Shout out to MJ, who's a Leo. Shout out to my niece Maddie, who's a Leo. Shout out to Wifey, who's a Leo. Shout out to his cousin, my people, Cheryl, who's a Leo. Shout out to Winston, Deidre, Gary. Shout out to my boy Leon, who's a Leo. So Leo season in effect. I got to... <laughs> I got out all the shout outs, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna jump right into the show, you know what I'm saying? Summer's winding down, you know. Since it was my birthday Friday, I started to reflect and I started to think about, you know, yeah. the next chapter in life, the things that I want to get accomplished. So it made me think of this topic, you know okay. what I'm saying? And the, the the topic we're gonna discuss first is how's your plan B going, right? So because everyone I know, especially in your mid to early thirties, <laughs> We all had plans and goals mm-hmm. when we was 20, 18, when we first got out of college, first started working. And for most of us, what we thought or the path we thought we was walking down didn't necessarily pan out. Pan out, Right? So I'm trying to see, you know, how's your plan B going? You know, like me, it's, it's weird because I wanted to work in Wall Street. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of working on Wall Street, but I'm working in operational capacity versus a trader where the big money is being made. So mm-hmm. I'm near the big money, but I'm not making the big money that I thought I wanted to make. You know what I mean? So my plan B is kind of working, but now I got new goals. Now I got new interests. And, you know, I want to discuss with you, you know. Yeah. Check in. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I thought we'd have the full <laughs> cast, but, you know, we could discuss the topic. The first subtopic is... Is it hard to chase your dreams after 30? All right. Uh, to answer that simply, I would say no. It's not hard. Uh, 30 is just a number, right? It, mm-hmm. it, and it's not really that high a number. I know we get to thinking, oh, my God, I'm 30. I expected this and that. I wanted to have this and that and mm-hmm. be this at this place in life. But uh, I know from experience, life has a way of just throwing you for a loop, you know a what I'm loop, saying? Yeah. Whenever you think you got to figure it out, you're on a certain path, something, bam, just comes in there. And, and really, it may ch- it may force you to change all your goals or thoughts, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know for me, I was on a certain path at, at 20. Uh, I was in my second year of college or third, yeah, something, at the second year of college. And I found out that I was going to be a father with my, you know, oldest child, Um and everything changed for me. You know, I ended yeah. up having to leave school. I got into a career that I never thought I would be in. You know what I mean? So I was not, it wasn't a matter of me being able to obtain a certain goal I had. It was me having to make a decision yeah. to what I was going to do at that point. Yeah. You know, and ever since my children have been born, that's been the, my priority. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, I would say your goals could be simple as this is a career I want to work in and, and I love it. I'm passionate about it so that I want to get there and then, you know, progress in that career field, however it may be. Or it could be something as simple as I just want to be comfortable. I want to have a career. Now, it may not be nothing specific that allows me to take care of my family and do the things that I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 
one of my main goals is just to, you know, provide as best I can for my children. Yeah. Um, I'll be all over the place when it comes to, like, career and shit. Well, you're a hustler. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyone who knows Mike. Anything I could do to make money. does. Legally. Multi- legally. Mike <laughs> just does multiple hustles. And I respect that. That's a grind. I, I try to put myself in that same mentality of, like, you know, regardless of my educational background, my work experience, if there's a way to make additional money, then I look into it. I try to research it. Mm-hmm. I try to do investments. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose kind yeah. of thing. I think what's more difficult about, you know, reaching 30 and then, you know, chasing your goals or your dreams, I feel like, you know, you have to re- you revamp your dreams. You kind of make them more reachable things and things that wasn't mm-hmm. reachable. Like when I was 16, 17, I thought I was going to be a rapper or in the music industry. And then you get into college and you start saying, you know what, I'm good with numbers. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because in high school I wasn't good in numbers, but then I got to college and it all made sense. Mm-hmm. And I was good with numbers and I was just like, all right, I'm going to work in the finance field. I had family on Wall Street. I'm like, I'm going to work on Wall Street too. And my entry into Wall Street wasn't as easy. So I worked I worked in radio. I worked for nonprofits. You know, I worked in different kind of places. And then I find myself now in the Wall Street area. But now it's more... You know, being 30 and chasing, now I'm kind of with this podcast and, like, you know, interviewing, you know, up-and-coming artists or people who want to become stars in different functions. I kind of find my passion back into being in entertainment. This is the thing I would say, not to cut you off, it's just about, I guess when we were younger, we looking for things that not only were um, things of interest, but things that will keep us in a certain financial space. Yeah, you know that we could take care of ourselves and our family with, um, and that's great. But my thing and what I try to tell my kids and anybody I speak to on subjects like this, uh, find something you love to do. You know what I'm saying? And it don't feel like work. It don't feel like work, and you will be able to get your money regardless. But I made a lot of decisions recently in my life that probably would be, well, not probably are considered financial no-nos, you know what I mean? Hmm. Not not smart financial decisions, but my peace of mind wasn't there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and my thing is, like, I could provide all the funds and whatever for my children and stuff like that, but if I'm not right in the right headspace... You're going to burn out. Yeah, and I'm not going to be no good, you know what I mean, for them. Who knows what I may do? I made bad decisions last year because I wasn't in the right headspace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... That's why I realized, like, I say to people now, even if you're in a great career, I wouldn't tell you just leave your job or nothing like that. But I would say find something that you love, you know what I mean, and then you could find your peace within that. You see what I'm saying? And I also think, you know, when you're in your 30s and you're now, you know, looking at the career landscape, you have experience to make decisions off of. Like you're saying you, you made a decision that some people might not consider as a safe decision, but you now have more the confidence of being in the work world for the last 10, 15 years. So you know, like, you know, there's peaks, there's valleys, there's opportunities, doors close, there's open mm-hmm. kind of thing. So I think the mentality that changes on chasing your dreams when you're 30, it's not dreams anymore, it's goals. You don't realize it, but you actually <laughs> are kind of one of the reasons why I said, you know what, I'm going to take this risk and, and get my peace of mind because... I remember you was the what you was like off you was without a job for like how long like a year at one point yeah like and that's crazy somebody with your education or what have you like that and it didn't I would think it didn't kill you it made you stronger right yeah you know what I'm I saying mean, it was tough on the marriage that's a whole it was nother tough. show yeah well, a whole yeah. nother show I ain't got but you know about that, that was <laughs> that was early that was also early in my marriage mm-hmm. as well so mm-hmm. it's sort of like it's at the time where. The person's still trying to determine what kind of man that you are, mm-hmm. what kind of provider you can be. So when that kind of happens, you know, it, um, it, it forced me to, you know, reflect. And then when I just started to work opportunities, it left me to never be content. But I'm still, I'm still moving around trying to find goals. And I just feel like at 30, what's, what's tough now is because, you know, doing the podcasting, if God willing, radio opportunity or something happens, I would love to embrace it. Mm-hmm. But I also know I still have to make money. 
I, you know, why you're chasing these kind of dreams or these entertainment avenues when people aren't paying, you know, checks. You just this this is yeah. this is a bill. For it's me, tough. What right? you can't do, I, I won't say can't, but what is least less likely for you to try to do and be able to do is take like an internship after yeah. thirty. It's and, like and that's what internships tough, right? don't pay because <laughs> people people have come up to me and say like you, you know what. The way that you run your podcast, you would be good on radio. And I'm just like, I would love to do talk radio. That would be so dope. The problem is, with the opportunities, it's like... You got to start from the ground. The entry the point, up. right? Yeah. You have to be mm-hmm. an intern and being 30-something years old, married with a mortgage, uh, a luxury car, and stuff like that. I How can't go back to making $10 an hour. How is it possible? How is it possible? So now the only entry point I would have to is like really make this podcast bubble, really get in front of certain eyes, and the people will be like, okay, you know what? This was your internship. You're, you're, you're not going to get premium. You're not going to be the morning drive on Hot 97 <laughs> or Power 105, but maybe we have a slot for you during this kind of time, and then you could go from there. But I can't be a assistant at this point mm-hmm. where I'm running around no, stuff like definitely. that. So I think the biggest thing about chasing your goals or your dreams after 30 is you have to realize okay you have to know financially what you're able to sustain yourself until things get better. Mm-hmm. I always say when you have to know what you can take as far as you you take what is it one step back to take two steps forward or yeah. something like that? But, How it, it, far and back then, can that step be? You and know I, know always, I, mean? I always told people, like, you know what? I felt my rhyme skills when I was trying to be artist was good. Bars! Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I thought I could have been as good as some rappers that were out, but I also knew that, you know what? A lot of times you hear the stories of these rappers and it was just like, you know, it wasn't like a lot of them were working in the financial industry or, mm-hmm. or, or like, you know, if they, they were in college. They was already living on the prayer. They was hustling. Yeah, if they were they in was, college, they they kind of had to make that decision. They didn't have I had to quit school yeah. and then go full-fledged kind of thing. Chase it's it's tough to be full-fledged into a career, going through college, going through grad school, and, and like, chasing I don't, both. I don't know no new It's like serving two masters. That started at 30. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know that at all. Rap, rap, mm-hmm. rap has a big ageism anyway. So, but that's the thing. It's tough. That's why I say with the thirty thing, I don't think it's too late. You know what I mean? I don't think that's really uh, um, one of those ages where you just passed your prime to obtain anything. Yeah. Except if you're an athlete, athlete, football, yeah. basketball. No, that ain't happening. Rap, nah, B. You got. You must have to have some serious bars to be able to come on the scene at thirty or plus. Yeah. Um, Cause but every there's other... big ageism in hip hop. So, but yeah. you you can get a crowd. You can get a crowd of the the biggest misconception is people always think they have to be pop popular. You know, popular to like millions. Mm. You could get your niche and work your niche and grow from there, kind of thing, right? Because there's there's people who are willing to listen if you find your crowd. But to me, it's just like Jay Z is like fifty still rhyming. Yeah, still but, he, he but he he got in. His yeah, audience, he, you know what I'm saying. Right. Oh, sure. Around 26. Nice. So the next question on this topic is: What changes are you doing to make your goals happen? Mm. I would say if I can answer that, I would yeah, say take that first. working Let's on see. time management. Working on like you know, the opportunity like using your full twenty four hour clock. Like Gary V, if you listen to the entrepreneur Gary V, he always talking about how, you know, if you want your dreams to happen, you can't be binge watching Netflix shows and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Is this opportunity like every hour on your cl- your day is a cost to it. Mm-hmm. So I now I'm trying to work on if I'm not sleeping that I need to be working towards my dreams or my goals one way or the other. Mm. Like, don't get it twisted. I like TV shows. We're going to talk about a TV show in one of the topics later on. Mm-hmm. But I like TV shows, but I, I never make myself locked in to watch something on the time that it comes on. No, like, this is, like, This Is Us comes on Thursday or Tuesday, whatever, at 10 o'clock. Right. I don't lock myself into that time. I, I, still follow. I only can watch it after yeah. the fight. But I still follow these shows, but on time where it's just like, okay, 
I use the time that I need to work on certain things, and now if I have a free moment, I can then go watch it kind of thing. Yeah. Even even the way that I view sports. NBA every day that is they have a game on. Yes. I have to have prioritization because I need to and I need to also concentrate on some time in the gym trying to work that into my mm-hmm. regimen kind of thing. So I think time management is the biggest thing time that we must learn. Amazing, yeah. You know, and then you you as a parent, I know parents have to learn time management to man- handle yeah, all of the the, time the tasks kids. that the kids had, the activities as well as doing your own kind of thing. I'm gonna tell you, I ran into I went I actually recently it was it last week or this this past week I went in for an interview with um a certain company or whatever right. And I ran into a buddy of mine. Uh, shout out to Big Party. <laughs> I ran into him in the building. He was just sitting there drinking his coffee or whatever. So I was like, yo. This was after I had the interview. And uh, he was like, yeah, I just dropped my kid off because they have like a daycare in there. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, oh, so what you doing? He was like, man, I just dropped the kid off. You know, I'm good. I don't have to work for a while. So I told him where I was coming from, whatever, whatever. And he started talking to me about what he does, right? He was like, you know, I was working here before, he said, but he just, he has a boy who's like, I think, five, four or five, and then he just had another kid, so he's really family-oriented, so his other job, he was like, yeah, it was a mess, you know, I had no time for my kids. He was like, I wasn't seeing them, but like an hour a day or something like that, and he was like, it wasn't working for me. So he said, I left that job, he found a job now to where he could manipulate the schedule and he has so much more time with his kids because he, work, he works at night now yeah. while they're asleep. And he only works, I think he said, like four days a week or whatever like that. So he has the ample time that he wants to spend it with his kids, you know what I mean, and build that relationship because that was what was most important to him. You know, it's a decent paying job. It's not no crazy paying job. Um, but he has what is most important to him, and that's his time with his kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just a matter of, What's your priorities and what's most important to you? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I, I'm a cancer. I love money. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But really, honestly, at this point, I would like to just be comfortable and be able to have as much time with my kids because I know how little that is. They grow up so fast, and it's like the money is always going to be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's funny. I don't have any kids, so I feel like I need to use my time more to chase that dollar or to mm-hmm. be productive to plant money trees, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. I think the biggest thing that that changed my goals or my focus was I don't necessarily live to chase the dollar. I want to chase more being happy, productive, you know, creating a legacy kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, But you still need to get paid. You still have bills Absolutely. and stuff like that. So to me, it's just like I don't serve the devil of chasing the dollar, but at the same time, I know my pro- productivity needs to increase. I need to be able to, like, you know, say, okay, I had th- this many hours open. I'm going to work on podcast promotion this hour. I'm going to work on building this other thing. This you is know? what I've been seeing out here, man, because I've been, like I said, I've been all over the place. I don't worked in this industry and that industry, and I'm coming across people who are like, yeah, I, gotta, I don't have, like you said, 24-hour clock. You know, I work to get this dollar whenever I can. It's a lot of hustlers out there, which I respect. But they're like, you got to sacrifice that time with your family and with your kids because you building something for them later. And my thing is like, okay, but my, my son is never going to be seven again. He's mm-hmm. seven now. Yeah, I'm building for him, yeah, when he's uh, uh, 15, 16 and trying to make sure he's straight going to college. But I don't want to miss out on that time yeah. he's doing this stuff yeah. at this age. How many, how many like, stories you hear of... Business tycoons or, or successful people who's just like they have all this success and their kids hate them, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. They 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 had this they beautiful legacy, but their kids are brats because they threw money not at their the, kids, not the time, but mm-hmm. not the time. They yeah. wasn't able to instill values in their kid, but they was able to get their mm-hmm. kid the Xbox and the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. So then the kids start thinking that you know. Material items are more important than relationships. Yep, exactly. So you you gotta you kind of have to kind of choose which devil you're gonna serve, kind of thing. Yeah. For lack of a better word. So the last question on this topic is: Being a 30 year old who's working on their Plan B, is time management or lack of resources the bigger roadblock? Um, 
I would say the lack of resources. Yeah. Um, and by resources for me, it is um, experience in different areas that are actually interesting to me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I spent 15 years in an industry where, like I said, I made a decision to get involved in because I had to provide. Not necessarily because it was one that I wanted to be in. And all that time, not saying it was time wasted because, you know, it helped me a lot. But now going out here and seeing different things, like, I feel like a jack of, well, not jack of, jack of all trades, jack of all trades but master of none, of none. type of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so it, it, it's really the resources that makes it more difficult for me. Uh, yeah, my time management isn't the great greatest, but I feel like that can be that can overcome. I can overcome that hurdle uh, easier than uh, not having the resources. Yeah, I think to me the bigger hurdle that I face, the time time management is is self discipline, right? So mm -hmm. sometimes I do suffer from that, but I do know I have ample amount of time to get things done. My thing is entry points. Like like me saying I love podcasting, I would love to do radio, is not knowing how to enter the industry in a way that's suitable for me. Like mm -hmm. I said, if I was 18, I would know I would beat the streets for an internship, probably work for five years, hopefully you get a radio slot at the five years or an opportunity. But, you know, at being, you know, 36 now, I can't intern for five years, be 41, broke, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? No money kind of thing. You know, the window has closed for me, so I have to be creative and, and create my own brand and upload my brand. So to me, it's resources, but not necessarily money, but it's like entry points, mm -hmm. the opportunities, it's studying that. I have an entrepreneurial mindset, but I'm still struggling on the components of making money, you know, minus a boss, minus mm. the nine to five infrastructure, the, you know, the corporate infrastructure. Like, I've been doing corporate for the last 14 years since I've been done with school. And it's just like, you know, I've, I've faced so many opportunities or so many um, situations that make me realize, like, you know what? Corporate is how I make my money, but that's not my passion. But at the end of the day, we until, just, you, until you figure it out, you need to get that check. We're just going to come up with our idea. You know, we bounced a couple things off each other before. And we're going to go into business for ourselves. That's, that, that, that's the goal. That's the, and, that, and, and I'm saying that to everybody right now, it's great to get an education. But what they're teaching you in the classroom is how to grow up and work for somebody else. That's what they're teaching you. They're, they're training teaching workers. You, exactly. They're not teaching you how they're to train you to be a worker bee and not necessarily a boss. A boss. Somebody, this is what you got to understand. So get your education, but understand it's a system that's trying to put you in a certain place. Okay? If you want to be a boss, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want that freedom to work, but, you know, do things how you so choose, then you have to own your own and do something yourself. Yeah. All right. So, you know. That's the end of that topic, you know. Shout out to Dulce. Dulce. Because Dulce. I was, it was anything is possible last night in the club. <laughs> the boat club slash. There's not a lot in this bottle, but that's yeah. because we drink. Okay? But if your I bottles is full, then I you feel like gazy. <laughs> I feel like, you know, Dulce has replaced Henny for me. Because really? Henny has a stronger kick to it. Like the aftertaste that Henny has, that... Dulce has Dulce, Dulce has a similar taste, but not that strong kick. So I'd rather do Dulce than Henny going forward. That's just my little. That's your personal preference. Yeah. Shout out! I'm a, we gotta get. I'm gonna bring some Grand Marnier in here. I like Grand Marnier too. I have some at home. Shout out to Chris. Chris put me on the Grand Marnier at Cliff's wedding. Really? <laughs> yeah. He was like, "Yo, this is my drink." He said, "That's the first time I had Grand Marnier." Really? Not. I, I had it and for I was a while, like, but oh, this I'm more of a good. I'm more of a rum dude. Usually, I'm drinking this rum, but. Yeah. Since I was drinking brown last night to the early morning, I said, F it. I got to continue with the brown before I mellow out. Keep that streak going. All right, so we're going to move on to the next topic. Now, this topic is more, you know, we always tackle a serious, you know, political type situation. Then we tackle mm -hmm. the relationship kind of thing. This is the relationship portion of it, right? And remember earlier in the show, I mentioned that 
we're going to talk about a TV show. Yeah. So this topic ties into the show called Love Is. Oh, now, man. Love Is is you a dope love show. show. <laughs> yes. Love Is is a dope show on the OWN network about the the Achilles, right? Um, mm -hmm. my, uh, I think it's, I can't what? think of. Salam. The female's name? Yeah. Is it Mara? Uh, don't get me the line. I'm sorry that I'm yeah. screwing up their name, but well, it's still killed. They beautiful. they 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 did the show the um the game. They did girlfriends. They're the producers and the creators of girlfriends. The game, something else. They the they're a black uh, producing duo. I know their last name is the Kills. It's Salam and Are you talking Mara. about the actor and actresses? I'm, I'm not. I'm talking about the actual producers of the show. Oh, the producers, the of creators, the show. because they're mm -hmm. actual. A black couple in Hollywood. Is who this are based producers. off them? Yes, based off of them. I didn't anyway, know that shit. The show Love Is is dope because it's about a man and a woman who get together who have similar interests and they're like in different places in their life. And yeah. they show you that love story. They show you that, you know, love is like he ain't have a pot. Spoilers if you haven't watched the show. But he Spoiler. has. When he met this woman, and his life wasn't together, and she and was, he was more living together. with his ex girlfriend. <laughs> exactly. He he knew what love is, right, and what love was to him, and she kind of needed to know the different levels of love. And he was Muslim. And I feel like that's the <laughs> trade off, right? So anyway, the the reason why that show brought up this topic, right, is because if you see the levels that they go through to find love. What they put up for, mm -hmm. just the romantic gestures that they do, I'm like the, the, the dating and all that stuff like that, and just the stuff they go through, it made me start thinking like, wow, I used to be romantic like that or used to see love that way, but then you live life and you don't see love in the same way. And I'm thinking, yeah. as being someone in 30s, experience, learning to love in your 30s, right? Because... Once you reach 30 and you've had a certain amount of relationships, you don't have the rose-colored glasses anymore. Nah. Love is not enough anymore. You got them bifocals. You know like, I see you. When you're in your... Love conquers all. Love is enough. Yo. But when you hit 30, yeah. it's just like love is not enough. Love is, is nice. It is. That's one thing I will say. Age will definitely... Um, affect the way in which you love, you know what I mean. Um, and I mean, that's I could get so deep right now. So we're gonna get to, deep. I don't want to get. Question is, what has what love mean to you changed since you hit thirty? Mm. No, since I hit thirty, I would say no. I would, I don't, I can't really pick an age. Mm -hmm. I can say as I've grown up, as the years have passed, it definitely has changed. Well, in your thirties now, so and my thirties now, the reflection of you um, know, has what love means to you changed? You not being in your thirties. Yes, uh, if I had to answer that straight so, up, so, yes. So speak on like to me, I, I spent too much time in my 20s, early 20s, putting a premium on love and it, it defining my happiness, it being mm. what will make me happy. So me chasing after people that I loved and in certain situations not getting them or being messed up situations. Did you I, really I love that those to, people? I, you I, thought you loved them. I thought people. I loved them and I, and I allowed that to define <laughs> my happiness or my current, you know, state of feeling, you know, accomplished. And then you, you get older and you're just like, yo, like, love is a you. cool thing to have, but if it's not there, it's not there. I, and I'm going to be straight up and honest with you. As I've grown, I have developed somewhat of a negative um, outlook on being in love. Mm -hmm. Not just love, and there's, there's a difference, but because um, love is great. Love is great. Um, my sign forces me to love a lot. And I love a lot of people, which has caused me a lot of problems. <laughs> because you can be in, you can love multiple people, but you can only be in love with one. You're a habitual lover. 
But this is the thing. People don't get it. I can love multiple people. Like, there's multiple I women that it. I love. But right now, there's no woman that I'm in love with. And because, simple fact, you can only be in love with one. I don't That's, believe that. You don't believe that? I don't. So you believe you can be in love with more than one? Yes. And I know that's Fuck that sounds wild as someone who's married. Yeah, and love I believe, is different than mine. Yeah, because people put this constraint on that, the fact that you're in love with this person. That it Tell me the that, difference. Because do you know the difference? Yeah, I, I do. I do know the difference. So what's the difference? I, I feel like this. You Love is a learned behavior. So you can love multiple people because of the experiences that you had with them. Mm -hmm. You love your ex because of the great times you had, but you know that person is not good for you, so that's why they're ex. Mm -hmm. But I feel like being in love is that, you know, you're currently in a state with someone that makes you happy, and you continually want to be happy with this per person. You continually want to share good moments with them. You want to grow with them, and their happiness is important to you, and vice versa. Isn't it like being... So under, I feel like you can have that in multiple situations. Of a drug? Isn't it like being under the effects of a drug? That's how I see it. Yeah. And that's why it's so dangerous. Yeah. I feel like when you're in love with somebody, it is like the most dangerous drug ever. Yeah. It is like the most to be dangerous with you, drug. Because you will look past so much shit and you will not make the best decisions that, that you should make yeah. because... You under that spell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And also, it's just like, you know, being in love makes you ignore your rationale. Mm -hmm. Being in love kind of uh, distracts you from, like, the whole picture. And that's why, to me, it's just like, you know. And that's why I'm not you, scared. You can't, I feel like you can be in love with multiple people. I stay away from but it. But my it's thing dangerous. is, your discipline has to make you realize mm -hmm. that, you know what? Because no, 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 my you dude. That this you is could, why I you said you can't, be in, that you can't be in person. love with multiple people. Because right, so, so give me your definition of being in love, flat out. Being and in love, flat out. Early, early on, it's one in which you got blinders on, bro. This is why I say you can't be in love with multiple people. You got straight blinders, and you only see... This one, right? Mm -hmm. So the way that the person make you feel, the way you feel for them, the sacrifices you would make for them, all of that is a matter of being in love. And I can't feel that way for this one and then at the same time feel that way for that one because I'm not going to sacrifice my, my, my time and, and, and how this person feels about me for this one. So apparently, I I feel stronger for them. So you see so what I'm saying? Let me let me throw a uh, something out there that had, it's not this it's apples and oranges, but to me this is the concept that makes me think about being you can be in love with multiple people kind of thing, right? Okay. As a parent, you're a parent and you have four kids, <laughs> right? You That's have four kids. You take it to the kids. But you have four kids. Yes, you have two daughters. You have two angel. sons, right? And I'm not gonna. Actually, Every parent has a favorite. Of your children's your favorite child. Because mm -hmm. that's 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 just wrong to, to to put it out there because then it creates things. Like to me, like my siblings all joke that I'm both of my parents' favorite. Mm -hmm. But then it, it kind of just like it causes little BS fights. But I say this. You love each of your child differently, but you still love them. Mm -hmm. Why can't you be in love with multiple people and love different people for different reasons? You can... Not this thing we were taught to keep us in line. Right? Everyone takes being non-monogamous as this disrespectful, ugly, nasty, dirty kind of thing. But then we force ourselves to be monogamous and then we do things in the dark That's and a, in the dirt. Why? Because we want to we, we wanna fulfill this society standard, standard of being monogamous. Of yeah, that, that society norms. That I want to say most men fail at or most men struggle with. Mm -hmm. And then we equate, okay, we love this person and then... 
since you know you have a lapse of judgment. Yeah. I'm not. You know, I just. Yo, I just want to. You can't use the kids and the. Why? Feel towards relationships with others. Why? Why not? Because it's not the same. First of all, those children are for me. Part mm-hmm. of my love for my children is they come from me. Mm-hmm. So that's self-love as well as love for them. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's from me. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know. There are some parents who despise their children. I, I can't understand that, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. But I love my children all the same. So what yes, about being certain times? What about being in love is singular? What about being in love is singular? Yeah. Like you can't have the capacity to love multiple people. I just expressed it. I I can only tell you you have blinders on, bro. So from the top God forbid you lose your spouse and then you get married again. It's it's, it's gonna take some time. So it's gonna take you're some no time. longer in love with that person because they're, they're you, no longer in the physical. No, you're gonna be in love with them for the rest of your life. But now you move on and have a new spouse, and you're in love with that new spouse. Capacity of being in love with just one person. I'm not saying you're wrong. That is your belief, and that is absolutely fine. What I'm saying is, from my vantage point, that is love. You can love multiple people. You can love as many people as you want. That is love. But when you're in love, it's different. And and, and in love is yeah, to be honest, so with, it's so strong. People who who put that was to soften the blow of breaking up or doing dirt with people. This whole BS. Is that not a fact? Is that not a fact? People. Yeah, but you're a great person. I want the best for you, but you're not for me. I, I, there's something more that I want that you can't provide. That doesn't mean I don't love you. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. So, so let me straight up. let me move to the next. We'll still talk <laughs> about that, but let me move to the next sub question. Let's do right? it. Is love and romance a thing of the past? And the reason why I say that because I'm looking, I'm watching Love Is, and I see mm. the journey that these people are going through or had to climb to be in love with this person. Mm. And I feel like, nope, I wasn't going to do, do with that. Yeah, it don't seem real, right? And I, uh, what's his name? Hold on. You see it. If I... Real quick, I'm going to ask you a question, right? Okay. Mainly for the women. Could you see yourself falling in love with a man? You're not sleeping with him. So you can't get digmatized. Muslim man, strong in his faith, living with his ex-girlfriend when he meets you and y'all first start out. Unemployed. Not a pot no to piss income, in. Not a pot to piss in. You're very successful in your industry, making good money. I mean, black women <laughs> in, in our generation oh. has had to deal with that a lot. So I, I was listening to Dr. Umar... What's his name? Umar Johnson? Yeah. yeah. And it, he was on Power 105 saying, the black woman is the only female um, of a certain ethnicity that makes more than her male counterpart. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, because That's the crazy. black woman is the most educated demographic in the United States. Yes. Shout out. You know, on. education <laughs> don't necessarily equate in um, value in mm-hmm. society, but there's a strong correlation between education and income. Mm-hmm. So being the most educated population and black men not being as educated, mm-hmm. there's a strong chance that the woman that you're with makes more money than you. Mm-hmm. you That's know? how they tore us apart. So Going but, back to the subject matter. So, but, but the, re- the past 
past because the the trials and tribulations that Nuri and Yusir are going through. Oh, I don't know anyone in our current I state. Love Nuri. Oh, I love <laughs> Nuri. Sidebar. Yeah, he, I've always been into these old chicks. <laughs> Dude, and you said, let me plug that in. Yeah. My thing right. about it is, I've always been kind of an older soul. Mm -hmm. So, what I bring to the table kind of always been appreciated by women who are older than me than the women who are mm -hmm. in our age class. Think about it in high school. The girls that we were chasing after were chasing after the older dudes and the D-boys and stuff like that. And it was <laughs> women who were a little older than us who kind of had appreciation of just a good man yeah. versus chasing after the dope boy, the money, the this, that, and the other kind of thing. So yeah. it just kind of worked out. I also feel like women of a certain age kind of know themselves, so it's less games being played. And yeah. I kind of, I and we can appreciate that woman. more because, listen, we're not for the ball, man. We ain't got no time for that. So, long story short, the reason I, I ask is love and romance. Oh, a wait, thing let me, let me the answer the question. Let me answer the question. Is that a thing of a past? Like, that, that old school, like what, what Yuri and Nasir in the show Love Is is going through, the sacrifices they, they're, they're going through to be That situation? Is that is, a thing of the past? That situation is kind of hard for me to believe that possible this day and age. You know? Um, Especially in black love. I don't, yeah, know, I yeah, don't know how many yeah, sisters currently in our day and age, in the social media era, in this era that we're going through, who are taking that kind of baggage? I don't know, but you gotta think about it in both ways. She accepted that in in, in her situation, but how many men? Well, I may make easier for men if it's a bad chick, even if she died on her luck, unemployed. Yeah, you know, let me don't care about like, that. I if, love her, but you know, her if, situation. If, if 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 the shorty is is loyal and sexy, men take on a whole lot of baggage. That to be honest with you, yeah. I feel like women of today in this generation aren't taking on that kind of baggage. Yeah. But yeah, I mean yeah. Especially like how Love. many successful men you know who their spouse don't have the same pedigree, but they're completely fine with that. But, you but know find why a successful that's, that's, woman it's who man doesn't have that pedigree and she is always it's running that man into the Because ground. men expect that their woman will not be as successful as them. So even if she is not in a position of doing much, a man will be like, Okay, I'm gonna take care of you. Yeah. Because that's the norm. I'm expected to take care of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If a woman meets a man and then he's in a position where she gotta take care of him. Then his value I, is... It's like the wall is up. I can't give you love because... She can love you, but it's always going to have a little attitude with Especially it. the fact that they wasn't sleeping to together, it. though. When they eventually started sleeping with each other. So, eventually. my thing is, is love and romance a thing of the past? No, like no. I, to the capacity of that old school love and romance kind of thing. No, I, I don't I, think it's I, not. Think it, I, I think, think it is. I don't think it is. Because you gotta, I don't think it's dead, but I, I don't think it exists in the way that it used to because no, of the microwave, everything. the microwave society that we live in. Everything we're trying to into smash. something. We're trying to sh we're trying to smash as soon as we meet each other. We're trying to smash before we go out on a date. <laughs> we're trying to smash on Netflix and chill. Binge because watch you gotta TV get that. Show, first of all, no you dates, gotta get that no out money the way. Spent. You gotta get that out the way. And this is what I'm gonna tell y'all, America and everybody else. It's not because you're in a rush to smash. I feel like. I got to get that out the way, for one, so I can then really appreciate you as a person. Because if I'm constantly thinking about, how does, oh, wait, I wonder let, how let's, dope let's, she is wait, in let, the bag. Let's, let's, roll, let's <laughs> take a step back. So oh, you, can't you, appreciate, me, you can't appreciate her until you sleep with her? No, no. See, you, you took that and you twisted that all around. No, that's that what you just said. That is not what I said. All right, what so, I'm saying is... So clarify what you just said. Sex clouds the mind. It doesn't allow you to see or think clearly. All right? So if we get that out the way and say, hey, bam, we did that. All right? Now, instead of me saying, 
oh, she's so sexy, or she looking at me, oh, he's so sexy. I just, you know, instead of that being in my brain, now I'm actually listening to what you're saying and trying to get to know you. You know what I mean? Because I've gotten past that. Damn, she's sexy. Because a lot of times you be listening to somebody, you be like, so I don't care about nothing what she's face. saying, but she you looks good. Her lips is good, whatever she's face. saying. If I can give. <laughs> you telling me with a straight face that. <laughs> you telling me with a straight face that you feel like if you get the sex out of the way quicker, that makes you more inclined to want to build and grow with that person? I feel Honestly? like it allows me to hear them better. That's all I'm saying. Listen, you're saying it allows me to hear them better. That doesn't allows make me, any sense, bro. It may not make no sense to you, but it makes sense to me. Okay? Because, listen, good sex, whatever, whatever, that's, that's a dime a dozen. Like, you can sleep with somebody, you're great, 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 whatever. If you want to find somebody who you really vibe with, and yeah, some people may say, well, you do that first and then let the sex come later. But constantly, sex is on the brain. If I already have had it, then it's not so much, oh, I'm thinking about how she would be in bed, or I'm thinking about this. I don't need to think reason, about that because I've already been I, there. The now I'm really locking in on who she is. Because sex, sex at the most is an hour out of your day. If it's done that great. So but how many honest, times are you thinking about it? No, but, but, but my thing <laughs> about it is, saying? if you allow sex to be the defining factor on how you choose a person or how you guys grow, mm. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. It's not the defining factor. It is a barrier. It is a barrier. Because you know what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the worst thing that could happen? You build with someone and then the sex is whack? Yes. But if, if, yes. if someone is so dope in so many other aspects, you work on the sex. Nigga, please. What makes sex whack? <laughs> what makes sex whack? Sex Nigga, whack is because... Please. Like, a woman's... Uh, and, and I don't want to sound sexist, but... A woman's sex being whack to me is her lack of enthusiasm, her lack of Lazy, being involved right? in the sexual act. If a woman is feeling you like that, it's hardly ever going to be whack sex. True. Some women are just I've came across and women then she's enthusiastic. Who are just you not can you guys se- can like learn sex each is other not better. Important to them. You can learn you can learn each other better when, when you guys are really into each other like that. Most of the dudes who always tell me that the sex was whack, it was due to a lack of enthusiasm. And sometimes we're the contributing factor on why this woman is not that enthused or that excited about having sex. Mm-hmm. Mm, interesting. That's All a topic right. for another day. Oh, so the, so the, last top, <laughs> the last question, sub-question on this topic is, does the revolution of us exploring sexuality lead us to diminishing the worth of love? And, and to, 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 to sub-break that question down, right? We live in a society now where it's just like, you know, in the earlier generations, we kind of hid our sexuality. We hid how promiscuous you was. Mm-hmm. But now in our generation, men and women are both like, yo, I get it in. That's me. You got to love me or accept me kind of thing. It's Sodom and like Gomorrah. Women used to have to lie and say, I've only been with you and this other dude in high school kind of mm-hmm. thing. And like everyone, every woman you met, I've been with three dudes. Two dudes before you and you kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? And then we all had to do the multiple kind of thing. But I say that (laughs) in this. Does that new philosophy of like, you know, we're more in tune with like, yo, everything doesn't have to be love. We could have sex buddies. We could have friends with benefits and stuff like that. Do you think that mentality has made us put diminish the importance of love? Has it diminished the importance of love? Mm. How many women you know was like, yo, uh, I don't care I'm not in a relationship. I get my nut off occasionally and I'm good. Mm. Whereas we used to hear like, oh my gosh, I need to be in love. Mm-hmm. Why can't I find love? Love this, love that. I don't feel like it has the value anymore. Do you think it's the fact that the sexual yeah. revolution of the, us being comfortable If I had to answer it bluntly, I would just say yes. I was like, the society today is not um, really focused on love. A- a- and not just sex-wise. It's a matter of, hey... I, Cause I, I'm telling you, I know so many people married in relationship. Not just a. Hey, I don't. I don't necessarily need to be in love with them. They do what they're supposed to do. They help me, you know, keep my house. <laughs> we 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 got kids together. You know, I don't. It's not. That's not important. Yeah. Being in love. <laughs> I, I don't need that. Listen, you do what you do. You know, we we taking care of our our, our responsibilities. You know, 
as long as you're not out there acting crazy and disrespecting me, let's just do this thing. Yeah. Love is not important anymore. To be because on, to be honest with you, all the all the relationships that I know, all the situations I love, like people are legitimately loving each other, but love is not a priority anymore. Love is not the end all be all kind of mm-hmm. thing. Love is not keeping people together. Mortgages love and don't bills pay the more, bills. Mortgages and bills keep more relationships <laughs> love, together than love. Yes, yes. Kids keep more relationships together than, than love. love. Yes. You love not paying the and bills. Is this love. a bad thing, though? Or is this us being more realistic? It's, it's a reality thing. Because reality I, to be thing. honest with you, the whole love is and love is disappointing to me is just as outdated as you got to go to college or you got to go to school to be successful. I think part of the reason why I love that show so much is because I know that's not what life it's is not, right it's not now. What it is right now. You know what I mean? So we love to see things to watch on it. TV that's different exactly. to us, and that's what that is. Because exactly. I know people be in these relationships, and it's that, still hard for me to accept it. But they just be like, you know, I I, I love him. You know, yeah. I love what he do. Yeah. I love that and, he's still and here. That's, that's, that's exactly, love, you know, and that's why the whole thing of being in love to me is not a singular thing. I'm speaking I for think that's me outdated. personally when I speak on being in love. That's it. However y'all feel, however you feel, I just know if I'm in love with somebody, it's the blinders. It's different than me loving you. Like, I tell multiple people I love them, which I genuinely do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love you. I got love for you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You ask... You can ask a million people, huh? I mean, who I said, I'm in love with you. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to come up with many. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, and, mm-hmm. But to I'm be honest with you, to I, you, it's fair. It's fair that, you know, you, you're not in love with a whole bunch of people, but you love certain kind of people. But to me, I, I get that. But to me, I don't think being in love is singular. Okay. I think morality. And not, not singular like. You can only it is one for your lifetime. No, I'm That's soulmate about, nonsense. I'm talking about I'm current talking about status. At the same time. Current status. I'm talking about at the same time. You can't be in love with two people at the same time. Right. I'm not saying you can only be in and love I'm with somebody. I'm not talking about the for, concubine situation where you know certain kings or people have four or five different wives. That was that was based on pleasure, pleasure and utility. It's, it is normal and it is actual that people are in love so, with mo- multiple so people at the you, same you time. You think like when you have the uh, polygamy um, you know, is it a religion or is it a way of life? It's a Whatever. practice. It's a we'll practice. practice. Okay. And you have multiple wives, three, four, five, however many are. Uh, you can be in love with all of them? Yes. No. 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 I, I, I feel like it's one I feel like who because has of the Bible tell over us, the others. The Bible it's tell us and society has told us that to be in love is to honor, worship, and praise this one person. So that's why we're sticking to it. But I don't, I don't think get I don't it from think the, the Bible. I get it from I get it from me. I get it from me. I don't get it from the Bible. I get it from me and how I feel when I'm in love. I know how I feel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I can't feel that way. First of all, <laughs> being in love with somebody is so draining and it's so much. You ca- I can't feel that way for most of the people. Be, not, I don't have not, enough not energy. Not to be um, to uh. sound shady and stuff like that, but do you think your definition of being in love has caused you to move on to some situations because you, because no. you start like feeling chasing, like you're in love, it's but it like, takes work to continue to have that euphoria. It's like chasing that first hit of crack. That's what it is. Says someone who's never smoked never smoke crack. crack. Never <laughs> smoked crack. But what I heard, that's yeah. what it is. But and it's like... Because that's storybook, bro. Yeah. You're you, you going by this ideology of being in love feels this way. And then as soon as... But marriage never feels that way all the time. Long-term mm. relationships never feel that way all the time. That's why I say you have to really check yourself on the in love definition kind of mm. thing. Because people always like... Oh, I'm in love. And then as soon as someone does something wrong, they're not in love anymore. All of a sudden, that euphoric feeling that they define in love being in no longer applies. And then now we're ready to move on. This is off, not on subject, but off subject. I blame R&B. Part of the reason why people ain't in love the way they used to be is because this R&B R&B is trash these days. The old 90s R&B. Yo, that make you fall in love with somebody you ain't even really in love with. Yeah, but just because you listen to it and you be like, I feel 
was not win for her. Nah, the only the only reason why to me it changes is this I feel like because of standards and because of what was acceptable, people had to be creative to say R&B what they got on their mind. Is all nowadays about it's just like yo, no, but I mean, nowadays how, how can I smash? How can I people, sex you? People down? aren't hiding anymore. Like dudes, dudes ain't sl- you're not slick if you pull off a Netflix and chill. That woman decided she just wanted to smash and didn't want more from you anyway. You didn't you didn't come up with a line that changed the game when you accomplished a Netflix and chill, but. We, we, we traditionally think that it's our game that pulls us into these situations when it, it's equally on the other side. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to move on. We only got a few minutes to the last topic, and it's Ask the Zone. Now, Ask the Zone is a segment where people have been emailing views from the friend zone, different yeah. questions, and it wants us to discuss it. So I'm going to pull up the question. Um, you going to do that now? Yeah. It's, it's right here in my inbox. Right? So... This is a situation that was sent to Amanda and, um, <laughs> you know, one of our co-hosts. Amanda, where you at? Nah, who's shout not out here. To She's Amanda. traveling. So, um, gut. so this is the, the, the question. I've been with my girlfriend for eight months, and we live together. She went through my phone while I was asleep using my fingerprint, Damn. which is a violation. Oh how many how many funny videos you see where a woman grabs a dude's finger? And, uh, right? But anyway. Talk about not trusting in it. So she used my fingerprint and found out I was texting my ex, but it wasn't anything crazy. It was just a general conversation. I can't lie. I do miss my ex, but that's only because things are rocky at home. Mm. When things were good with my girlfriend was the only person that was on my mind. Of course, she was very angry and on the verge of breaking up with me, but we got through it. So she was ready to break up with him because he had communication with his ex, but they got through it. So (laughs) this is when it gets a little thicker. I went away for a week, and when I came back, she confessed to me that she slept with her baby father. Hmm. She feels like it was validation from what I have done. So her justification for sleeping with her baby father is because he was texting her ex. So I guess she's trying to say, I don't know what you did with your ex. So I went ahead and slept with my baby father as justification. Anyway. But of course she took it too far. I don't I I did forgive her, but I thought about it some more and now I want to leave. She told me earlier this week that her cycle is late when she's always regular. She did not take the test yet, but she may be pregnant. My question is if she's pregnant, would it be wrong if I break up with her during the pregnancy or should I stay until the baby is born and have a DNA test? If it's mine, if it's mine, do I work it out and stay? So, obviously, if it's yours, you're a father, so you have to be responsible about it. But I don't blame you right now because she out here living her best whole life. And this is what pisses me off. I always feel like, you know, like the Jay-Z song, I was just messing with with those chicks. I was going to get right back. But you don't get a brother back like that kind of... I always feel like women take it to that next level. Right? Like, men do stuff that's sloppy. Women do stuff that's calculated. Calculated and evil. And I wish evil. Amanda was here and we had a woman's, more woman presence mm. so that it doesn't seem like we're just attacking women. So, what's, what's your advice to this dude? Are you ready for Should he advice? stay and, and wait for the DNA test? Should he bounce? I feel like this. He probably needs some time away. But he shouldn't mm. shut down their communication because that could be his kid. I would say this, and I'm gonna give this advice from some similar experience as far as parenthood. I ain't never experienced no shit like this in a relationship, but parenthood wise, throw the whole woman away. Throw, throw, the, throw the whole, the whole throw woman away. away. Get rid of her. Uh. All right, because she's the type of person that you can't trust going forward. Yeah, you was. T- Messaging your ex or whatever, whatever. What Meek said, there's levels to this shit. There's levels, there's to, levels the to this shit, baby. So, Listen. her justification for sleeping with her baby father was she caught him texting his ex. So, she says, I did this as valid because I was, you know, you gave me validation to do this. She's trying to whole hypnotize you. She's trying to justify her hoism. Or for something that's not even mm-hmm. 
valid. But listen, throw the whole woman away. If and when you find out that the child is yours, right? You do want to be, if you're a good dude, you want to be in your children's lives, right? Mm -hmm. The only way to be in that 100% is to be with their mother. Mm -hmm. Now, you can still be in their life. Trust me, I know. But to be in it 100%, y'all got to be together. So life is too short to be yes. with someone who you think is a whore. Absolutely, because absolutely. Because you want to raise a kid with them. Absolutely, but people make mistakes. This is a calculated mistake by her. But I, and I understand people say, "Oh, you should not stay together with the kids." But I definitely understand why people do that a lot. Yeah. You love your kids so, so much, you want to be you, around you them all the time. You said something that was so critical you stay earlier. with the person. There's levels to it. The reason why I can't rock with you. It's because you went and slept with your baby father, right? Which to me means that your baby father's always going to be lingering in the background. Because it's not like, okay, so been you got over it. So it would have been better if it was a random dude? Yes, because it's not like you get over it because now we, mm. we, we, we worked it out. That's your baby father. He's still got to be in our lives because he's the father of your child. He's always around. So now it makes me feel like, yo, he always has the easy pass to your vagina. That's your baby father that you cheated but on. But now with. if that kid is yours, you're also her baby father. Yeah. And then I may move on to the next chick and still could smash when I want to because you loose like that. So you, say, you. so you say throw the whole chick away and just don't look back. Let me tell you, life is too <laughs> short. I used to always think that, you know, I used, to, I, I used to tell my wife when we was dating that, you know what? Watching my parents go through everything, I don't believe in divorce. So... Don't marry me if you're not here for the long haul. But then, then you live life and you realize, like, yo, being miserable and not happy is unhealthy. You die earlier for being unhappy, stressed. You develop nasty habits because of it. Why is I it say a leave fact? If you're not happy, why is it a fact that men do not live as long as women? This is because a fact. I deal in insurance, we take life on insurance. Stress. So I we know. We take on stresses and we and we take chances that we shouldn't. They right? fucking killing us, bro. They killing us. I'm not gonna say us. women are killing us. They're I'm just saying us. we take on stress <laughs> that we shouldn't take. And one thing okay. about it is, live your most happiest life. Your kids will be sad that mom and dad is not together, right. but if mom and dad secretly want to kill each other, the kids are growing up in a toxic environment anyway. Yeah, I know, but that's easier said than done. And my advice to you, homie, whoever you are out there, just throw her away right now and think about what you want and find out if that child is yours. If that child is not yours, hey, you if you bullet. if you still want to be with her, you taking a risk? No. You taking a you, risk? He, the reason why do he what shouldn't you do. be with her because she thinks he's a freaking idiot. I was validating for sleeping with my baby father because I caught a text message. And she read your text messages, and it wasn't nothing crazy. On top of that, the fact that she would go to that extreme to take your finger while you sleep and open up but your she, phone. She, she knew she was doing dirt anyway. So that's why she was yeah. doing that creepy. Let me check to see what's exactly. going on with him. You can't just go sleep with your baby father unless there's still kind of some communication exactly. there. Exactly. You know what I mean? Just saying, get rid of the whole bitch. <laughs> Don't look Throw back. shorty away, but to be honest with you, get I, rid of her. It's more disrespectful <laughs> that she she hit you with the I only did it because you was texting your ex. So when you bounce, I went and slept with my baby father. And just know, whatever you do going forward, this is her level of vindictiveness. Oh, this nigga didn't take out the garbage. I'm gonna go suck the mailman's dick. Because he didn't take out the garbage. It sounds uh, crazy, but this me, is her I'm level more of insulted by the lack of intelligence that she thinks you have. Yeah, she's to be serious. Mm -mm. To be honest with you, she don't love you, nigga. She don't love we're you. All, we all we we're, we're made of flesh. We have needs. We have desires. So don't get it twisted. I always tell people, cheating necessarily is not always the end or be over in a relationship. I can survive certain cheating in certain circumstances. But when the disrespect is blatant, like you an idiot, she she blamed you for the reason why she cheated mm -hmm. when you didn't cheat. Now you could be withholding information. You maybe you and you, even if you did maybe cheat. you sent your ex a meat pit, which was which was 
sounding like y'all was about to get down. I don't but believe from that. What you t- from the details that from I the had, details that she's we have, disrespectful and he's I don't, I don't believe he's withholding details. But if you're not, if it's not no sexual connotation in those texts, if you're not sending her pics, she's sending you pics. Listen, that's unwarranted. Her response, and even if it, this is my thing. Two wrongs don't make a right. That's a song. Even if it was, she should have been like, you know what? You mad disrespectful. I'm not fucking with you no more. Or we got a lot of things to work on. I want to still be with you. You don't just say, oh, well, you may or may not have slept with your ex, so I'm going to go sleep with mine. And, and the fact, what are y'all relationship built maybe on? Maybe I'm being petty, but maybe this the next level of it. She could be pregnant, but she doesn't know if it's yours or his. That means she out here sleeping with dudes raw. Yeah, why she slept with her ex? Like, hmm. She it's didn't even say. To the disrespect. She didn't. Even, first, of all, she it's said, "Hold on, I don't respect him enough, so I'm gonna sleep with this man." But on top of that, I really don't respect him, so I'm gonna sleep with my ex and not even protect myself from getting knocked up. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take that chance. Now, you live with her. You guys got a household together. It's tough, bro. And, you know, she don't follow the show. If you need that, you know, sometimes we need that 50% for the bills and stuff like that. Work on your exit strategy. I hope God blesses you <laughs> and she's not pregnant. Right? So you I can hope work she on is. If she is pregnant. She is pregnant. And it's not yours. I just hope it's not yours, bro. I and you stay, bro, you're going to wind up on the first 48, because <laughs> that kid is going to say something or look like the ex. It's going to oh, be some disrespectful situation. Like the ex. She going to tell you that's not your kid anyway. Bro, avoid the domestic yeah. violence potential in that situation, bro. You signed no birth certificate? Even if the kid is not yours, she can get you for child support. Remember that. <laughs> On a serious Don't get caught note, up in that. On a serious oh, in note, the hospital. So if, if you love this girl and you're willing to work it out, God bless. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of potential for negativity around the household, mm-hmm. domestic violence potential, potential for things to get ugly. So please, Ray really Carew? know, really weigh. You remember the football player, yeah, Ray Carew? Yeah. Really weigh the option. Mm-hmm. Like, don't let the fact that you need 50% for the, the rent and cable bills or something like that keep you in there. I don't know your situation, right? I'm going straight off of my my, my thoughts of the situation because when you live with people, you usually live with people because you love them. But sometimes, like in marriages, y'all got a mortgage in both of y'all names. Mm-hmm. Y'all got bills in y'all name. You know what I'm saying? So do what's best for you. If, if God blesses you and that's not your child, man, think about moving on. And that's that's <laughs> the end of this episode. That's the zone for so, you. Take our advice. Shout bro. out to all the people following us. Do you have any words of wisdom you want to leave us with? Um, along the lines of what we talked about at the beginning, just do whatever you can to be happy. Do whatever makes you happy. Don't chase a dollar. What do you say? Chase a legacy. Yeah. Like I always say, don't chase liabilities. Chase Thank your you. legacy. It's Leo season. We out. Peace. Views. Views from the friend zone. Mom trying to beat. I'm trying to reach the end zone. Think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends, though? It's cool, though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo. Views from the friend zone. Mom trying to be, I'm trying to reach the end zone. You think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends, though? It's cool, though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo.